County 30th Anniversary Gala. Funding for this presentation is provided by the Charles E. Culpepper Foundation, Texaco, the Arthur and Alice Adams Charitable Foundation, Miami, Florida, and Donald G. Sisler. Welcome to the Metropolitan Opera for this special gala performance celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Met debut of Luciano Pavarotti. I'm Garrett Gutley. The beautiful Italian city of Modena has given the world many fine things, fast sports cars, gourmet vinegars, and sparkling red wines. One of its greatest gifts to us is the incomparable Luciano Pavarotti, whom we're honoring here today. Blessed with a personality as expansive as his voice and a smile as radiant as his high notes, Pavarotti's fame and appeal have stretched far beyond the opera house, and his name has become a veritable synonym for opera among the general public. The scale of performance marks Pavarotti's 360th appearance at the Met since his debut here on November 23, 1968. Over the years, he has graced our stage in 20 different roles. Today, Mr. Pavarotti will sing one act from three of his favorite operas, as Rodolfo in Act Three of La Boheme, Rodimus in Act Four of Aida, and Nemorino in Donizetti's L'Elysir d'Amore. Nemorino, the character of this lovesick peasant with a poet soul has long been one of Pavarotti's signature roles, and it is with act two of this heartwarming comedy that today's performance begins. First, though, let's hear from Mr. Pavarotti about each of these great tenor roles. We begin our conversation about the bel canto hero, Nemorino. First of all, thank you for being with us, and congratulations on three decades at the Met and this gala. Thank you very much. Gracias. Now here we are, big anniversary, big celebration, and three of your favorite pieces that you've chosen. Let's go at them one by one. The first act we're seeing in this gala is L'Elysir d'Amore. Now why did you choose that? Is it the music which suits you so well? No. Is it the character? Uh, character. Character and uh, yes, the music in terms of uh, vocalist, uh, vocalismo. Elixir of Love is an extreme important opera in the history of the tenor because Caruso did it and since then all the big tenors are singing the opera. Oh, how do you see this opera and particularly this act? It's a light opera, it has well, a this, happy ending. This act is the, the happy coronation of all the belief uh, that is in the soul of Nemorino Then he always trusts love until the very very end and the music then Donizetti writes for him, then is absolutely sensational. The so And so many pieces. Then Puccini will have done 10 operas with, <laughs> with the pieces. In this act, we have one of the greatest arias, the yeah. greatest moments for a tenor, yeah. Una Furtiva Lagrima. Una Furtiva Lagrima. That's one of your calling cards. What's going through your mind when you're there on that stage singing this particular aria? Uh, in 1974, we celebrate Caruso in Naples. And by accident, I choose Una Fortiva Lacrima without knowing then for Caruso in Naples, that aria and that opera was the last one he has done because the critic write bad the day after. And he said, I'm coming to Naples to eat pizza and spaghetti and probably to die, what he did. I have always this thing in my mind, always these men then he's singing in his own country, in his own theater, for the last time. And there is some, something that makes me do the pieces, the piece even better than, than a, normal, a normal aria. In your broad repertory, you sing a lot of operatic roles which are tragic. Yeah. This isn't. This is an happy ending, finally. I love it. I am the Morino sometime in my life. And oh. I am proud to be. How is that? How are you Nemorino? I am Nemorino because I trust. I trust, I trust, I trust. I'm a trustful person. I'm don't, I don't think I am uh, stupid, but even Nemorino is not stupid. He's just in love. And when a man is in love, he's stupid. He's a poet. He's a country, country poet, illiterate. He cannot write a poem, but he's a poet. Act two of Elysir finds Nemorino in despair. 
the elixir of love has failed, and his beloved Adina is about to marry Sergeant Belcore. But with a little unwitting help from his foes, Nemorino will triumph in the end. Luciano Pavarotti plays the lovesick Nemorino, with Ruth Ann Swenson as his beloved Adina. Roberto De Candia sings Sergeant Belcore, Nemorino's rival in love, and Leo Nucci is Dulcamara, the quack doctor who volunteers to help Nemorino win Adina for a small fee. Here is our conductor, James Levine. Signori, ho qua una canzonetta di fresco data fuori, vivace graziosa, che gusto vi può dar. Voi che la bella sposa mi voglia secondare. Sì, sì, ma che mancava, che che se cosa va, se non le tocca il mare, che giù che ha con il mare. Parola due voci, attenti, attenti. Io son ricco e tu sei bella, io tu cacchi vizi e tu. Sarai più bella, Nina mia, che vuoi di più? Voglio tu, mio senator, che d'amor supplica il suo, con questa mi non più rigor, far felice un senator. Prendi l'oro e lascia amor, chiede questo lieve vola, 
Ho veduto il notaro, sì, l'ho veduto, non va più speranza né morino per te, spezzato il cuore, di il mio non più rigore, a felice un senato. Voi qui, dottore? Sì, ma han voluto pranzo questi amabili sposi e mi diverto con questi avanzi. Ed io son disperato, fuori di me sono io, dottore, l'uomo può essere amato, prima dei domani, adesso, su due piedi. Cospetto, è matto, recipe l'elisir, e il colpo è fatto. E veramente amato sarò da lei. Da tutte, io te il prometto, se anticipar l'effetto dell'elisir tu vuoi, bevi ne tosto un'altra dose. Io parto fra mezz'ora. Cara dottore, una bottiglia ancora. E volentieri, mi piace giovare ai bisognosi. Hai il danaro. Ah, non ne ho più. Mio caro, la cosa cambia aspetto. A me verrai subito che ne avrai. Vieni a trovarmi qui presso alla pernice. Ci hai tempo un quarto d'ora. Oh, ma infelice. La donna è un animale stravagante davvero, 
Adina, mamma, di sposarmi è contenta e di ferire pur voi fino a stasera. Ecco gli rivale, mi spezzerei la testa di mia mano. Ebbene, che, che cos'ha questo Beggiano? Ehi, ehi, quel giovinotto, cos'hai che ti disperi? Io mi dispero perché, perché non ho denaro, ne so dove trovarne. Esci munito, se denari non hai, fatti soldato e venti scudi avrai. Scudi e pensionali quando adesso sul momento che farteggio e poi con tanti glorie or al reggimento. Ah, non è che seduce questo cuore se l'amore in guarnigione non ti può mancare amore no, 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 non ti può mancare amore anno, anno ai perigli la guerra io sovente esposto sono venti scudi e domani la patria terra io congiunti ai me abbandono e me sonano ma so pure che cuore di questa altra strada me non è A solo un giorno trionfa. Le canture sono di pace, palettine, le bandiere, agitarsi a morsi, piace con le dispe di bandiere, pure le dispe di bandiere. Ma chi un giorno tiene la dispe. Sempre lieto, sempre gaio, anche un bel concettinaio di costanza, non si annoia, non si perde a sospirare, non si perde a sospirare. Sopra 
sei sotto ogni sempre un buon figliolo sarei preso caporale se me prendi se me prendi ad esemplare sì ho ingaggiato il mio rivale anche questa è da puntarsi ho ingaggiato il mio rivale anche questa è da contar, ho ingaggiato il mio rivale, anche questa è da contar, ho ingaggiato il mio rivale, anche questa, anche questa è da contar. Thank <laughs> you. 
gode mia Se tutta la gioia è al mio comando Io distillo il piacere, l'amor, l'ambito Come l'acqua di rose E quel che adesso vi fa meravigliar nel giovinotto Tutto il contoglie del mio tecotto Pazzie! Pazzie, voi dite, incredula, pazzie Sapete voi dell'alchimia, il potere, il gran valore, dell'elisir d'amore, della regina Isotta. Esatto. Isotta, si o nostro, gli misture e d'ogni cosa. Che scudo, in morire due teste in l'elisir. E me lo chiese per ottenere l'affetto di non so qual crudele. E tu? Languiva, sospirava senza ombra di speranza e per avere una goccia del farmaco incantato vende la libertà si fa soltanto Ha <laughs> 
prestito di negare il suo valore. Io rispetto il mio desiderio, ma che mi vive con la giovane, e vorrei lasciare ogni altro, ma tutto questo il mio sarà. Ah, dottore, troppo scaltra, più di te costei ne sa, si più di te costei ne sa, si più di te costei ne sa, si, si. Una tenda rotta di là, un sorriso tutto rinno, ma c'è perché il mio sostegno, ma per il rischio ci spreca, ma il mondo è tutto di là, e si conti sposi e morti,
Si può morire, si può morire, Alla cresce beltà l'amor nascente, a far l'indifferente si seguiti così, finché non viene e la spiegarsi. è naturale o fretta amore
avete volato e ben tenete poiché non so amato voglio morir soldato poiché non so amato voglio morir soldato non avrei pace se mi inganno il dottor se mi inganno il dottor voglio morir Mi presento! Ehi, correggi, 
che ogni difetto, ogni vizio di natura e fornisce di bellezza la più brutta creatura. Camminare alle rotte, schiaccia notte a piana bozze, ogni incomodo tumore copre sì che più non è. E' uno fa seducente e i guardiani scrupolosi, un sonnifero eccellente per le vecchie peggerosi, dà coraggio alle figliole che ha paura a dormir sole, sveglia io per l'amore più potente del caffè. Dalle stelle io vi lascio un gran tesoro, tutto in lui salute belle, allegria, fortuna e oro. Rinverdite, rifiorite, intinguate, arricchite, della grande tutta mara e si tratta di guardare. We've heard the first part of our tribute to Luciano Pavarotti. And his wonderful 30 years at the Met. The final act of Lely Zerdamore, Pavarotti, and his celebrated performance as Nemorino. After this brief intermission, we'll be back to hear him in his Met debut role, Rodolfo, in Act 3 of La Boheme, and as Rodames in Act 4 of Aida. Funding for this presentation is provided by the Charles E. Culpepper Foundation, Texaco, the Arthur and Alice Adams Charitable Foundation, Miami, Florida, and Donald G. Sisler. You're watching PBS. The Next time on Mobile Masterpiece Theater. You're a maniac, huh? Owen Springer has a new job, a new car, and a new romance. I love you. He also has a problem. Who? Who? Who is it? Where is it? Reckless. Sunday night at 9, right here on WETA. Next on Mystery, John Thaw returns in his finest season of Inspector Morse. You made mistakes. 
DCI Johnson won't like if it. If he'd done his job properly in the first place, we wouldn't be here now. You're no longer involved in this investigation, sir. Inspector Morse on Mystery. That's Thursday on WETA. Get ready to party with Luciano Pavarotti and his surprising circle of friends. It's a musical must-see directed by Spike Lee that you can see only on great performances. Do see Pavarotti and Friends 98. That's tonight at 10.30. Welcome back to the Metropolitan Opera, celebrating Luciano Pavarotti's 30 years with the company. In the house, packed with his fans, there are as many stars in the audience as on stage, including New York Yankees manager Joe Torre, New York City Mayor Rudolph Giuliani, and United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan and his wife, as well as colleagues from the opera world, including Cecilia Bartoli and Placido Domingo and his wife Marta. Next in our gala is Act Three of Puccini's La Boheme. Indeed, a celebration of Pavarotti's career would be unthinkable without an excerpt from this beloved opera, since it's been something of a lucky charm for him. Not only did the 26-year-old Pavarotti make his first operatic appearance as Rodolfo back in 1961, it was in the same role that he made his Metropolitan Opera debut 30 years ago. Then in 1977, he sang Rodolfo here once again in the first ever live telecast from the Met. First, though, Here's more of my interview with Mr. Pavarotti talking about this great role, as well as about highlights of his career, including his three decades at the Met. We now come to Act Three of La Boheme. This act is almost a jewel, isn't it? Well, the, vocally speaking and musically speaking, is perfect. Very sparkling, very uh, Puccini, the painter Puccini. Tell me a bit about Rodolfo, because you know him so well, this character. Uh, Rodolfo is a poet, and he writes. Uh, he doesn't uh, gain much money. He's poor. And you, you took on the role of Rodolfo as a young singer, yes. as a young... it was my debut. Your absolutely first performance was Rodolfo. The first performance, the 29th of April 1961 in Reggio Emilia, at the end of a competition that I won, uh, I, make, um, I sang uh, Rodolfo. And was, uh, that was the day you changed my life, because I was an elementary school teacher, and I realized that that night I become a tenor, so something else. On that night and after that performance, you knew, as you say, that you could have a career in music yes, as a singer. Yes, for sure. Did you know for sure where it would take you? No. Not for, not, nobody can know, and uh, not, I was not even expecting that. I was uh, studying to become uh, a good tenor, a guy who can uh, maintain the family well, uh, better than an, another worker, but no more than that. So what would have been your dream after the, that first performance? To go home singing. I was singing, I sang uh, that, that performance for nothing. Then the first two performances then I sang, uh, I, I sang the performance for $50, both. <laughs> 25 each. Yes, 25 <laughs> each. I, I bring home $10, not even, $6. <laughs> Your fee's gone up since then. Yeah, about 1961. Here we are, you as Rodolfo, the role you know so well in Act Three in this marvelous Zaffirelli production. The music is sublime. What's going through you? Well, in this moment, Rodolfo is in a tragic mood. He realized the, that uh, Mimi is having the tuberculosis. He loves her so much. He tries somehow to push her away from him in order to give her the possibility to have a warm apartment, food, necessary medicine. But of course, you know the story. She doesn't accept that. She won't go to die in the house of uh, Rodolfo in the, in the springtime. And she dies. She arrives and she dies the same day. 30 years. How many operas at the Met? 
Uh, many, 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 and a lot with Jimmy Levine. With Jimmy, I have done something very special. I have done uh, Idomeneo, who is a Mozart opera, very beautiful. And I have done even the first act of uh, Otello, who is uh, something who made me say, I am a singer who sang from uh, Sonambula to the Otello. <laughs> it was very good. Uh, at the Met, I have done the first recital uh, with the piano in 1978. The first live performance uh, uh, on television of Bohème. That was something very, very, very special because the day before on the street, nobody stopped me. The day after, everybody stopped me on the street. So I realized at that moment what means television. It's the power of that little thing called yes, the camera. That is the power of that little thing called the camera. <laughs> Again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. We're back at the Met for Act Three of Puccini's La Boheme. The scene is outside a tavern at the gates of Paris on a bleak, wintry morning. The alien Mimi arrives to talk with her friend, the painter Marcello, about her troubled relationship with the poet Rodolfo. They are soon joined by Rodolfo and Musetta, Marcello's flirtatious and temperamental sweetheart. And Rodolfo and Mimi reconcile as Marcello and Musetta squabble. In today's cast, Luciano Pavarotti as Rodolfo is joined by soprano Daniela Desi as Mimi. The quarrelsome couple, Musetta and Marcello, is portrayed by soprano Ainoa Arteta and baritone Dwayne Croft, who are happy newlyweds in real life. And here is our conductor, James Levine.
The curtain has fallen in Act 3 of Puccini's La Boheme at this special gala performance commemorating the 30th anniversary of Luciano Pavarotti's Met debut. For the final act of this gala, Luciano Pavarotti will turn to a very different sort of hero, the Egyptian warrior Rodimus in Verdi's Aida. Here is Mr. Pavarotti again, reflecting upon the charms and challenges of this formidable tenor role. Puccini wrote La Boheme to great effect. Another great composer, perhaps the great composer of the 19th century, Giuseppe Verdi. Yes. Which brings us to Act Four Ooh, of Aida. Oh, Aida, Aida, Aida. Tell me about you and Aida and Rodimus. Uh, I don't think of just me, but all the Italian tenor in her back, even if they are born with the small voice, they dream to become Radames. Why? Because he's a conqueror. The phrase uh, who symbolize Aida is the phrase that Aida tell Radames when he go to the war. Ritorna vincitor, come back winner. And that is what Aida means for, uh, for a person. When I am singing my aria from Turandot, vincerò, vincerò, is always winning again. And is the reason why, in my opinion, everybody won't hear that. Because we are all fighting in the world for victory. Victory on, on, the, on the little thing of the life. Victory in your, uh, in your spirit. Victory in your diet, if you can. I mean, uh, it's always a battle that the, the men uh, have to win. And in Aida, the first aria is uh, Celeste Aida, which is a massacre because you never breathe. Never, never, never. You always sing and never breathe. And then there are many other beautiful things. All, Aida is uh, in uh, Parma. Uh, they say, Aida is like the pig. You don't throw away anything. In the fourth act now, what we're going to see, it's a bad moment. He rejects Amneris' love. He rejects Amneris, he doesn't care. He says, uh, I, he says, I think that is the best thing in the world if I can die for Aida. They don't accept any compromise. I cannot be your husband. I cannot uh, promise you that I will not see Aida because uh, certainly I will, I'm going to see her if you leave me alive. And what we see in this fourth act is the duet with Amneris, highly dramatic, and then of course the final tomb scene in that tomb with Aida. Beautiful lyric Incredible moment. atmosphere. This duet is incredible with Amneris up there, who is uh, very obvious this is regretting to have made this choice now, but it's too late. And uh, she's praying for us. Uh, You've said that so many roles like Rodimus are roles of conquerors. There's a struggle that this is part of anyone's existence. To what extent is it part of your existence that it is a struggle from that first debut performance as yeah. Rodolfo? I think I was born like that. A person who won't win, that's for sure. I only, all, without making any uh, pushing people away from, but to myself, I think I won't win. And what is winning? Being the best or being? Oh, be, being the best of yourself. Being the best of yourself. When I am the best of myself, of course, there is other better, but uh, I won't, it's enough for me. And how many nights, how many performances afterwards, the curtain has come down and the cheers have stopped, do you say, Luciano, I've won tonight? Most of the time, because other way we will not be here after 30 years. <laughs> and what a great 30 years it has been. We conclude today's performance with the fourth and final act of Verdi's Aida. Mr. Pavarotti is Rodimus, the Egyptian warrior who has conquered the Ethiopians but unwittingly betrayed his country for the love of the Ethiopian princess Aida. The Egyptian princess Amneris, who loves Rodimus, tries to save him, but Rodimus would rather die as a traitor than live without his beloved Aida. Luciano Pavarotti as Rodimus will be joined by Maria Gulagina as Aida, Dolora Zajic as Amneris, and Paul Plishka as the vengeful High Priest Rompus. Here again is the Met's artistic director and our conductor, James Levine.
Oh, my God. 
What a glorious day at the Met. A gala performance celebrating Luciano Pavarotti's 30 years with the Metropolitan Opera. And after these well-earned bows, 
we will have a special presentation to this unique artist, Luciano Favaro. Good evening, I'm Joseph Volpe, General Manager of the Met, and tonight we are celebrating the career of one of the greatest artists of the century, Luciano Pavarotti. And we are paying tribute to the man himself for what he's given to this company and our audiences over the past 30 years. Part of this tribute will be presented by Mayor Giuliani. Mayor? For 30 years, Luciano has been one of the, I think, most beloved artists to come to New York City. He's someone that the people of New York have taken to their heart. He's entertained us here at the Metropolitan Opera and in theaters and restaurants, sometimes even on the streets. So for all New Yorkers, I am very, very proud to proclaim today Luciano Pavarotti Day in New York.
in, in celebrating Luciano's debut in the House, I remember November 23rd, 1968, when a young Italian tenor first stepped on this stage as Rodolfo in La Boheme. Uh, I was the master carpenter at the time. <laughs> Luciano has gone on to sing more performances in this theater than in any other theater in the world, and for that, we have been truly blessed. Well, Luciano has sung much of the standard Italian repertory here in the Met. There is never anything standard about a Luciano performance. His performances are always special events. But in getting to the essence of what makes Luciano such a beloved artist to millions around the world, I look at the role of Nemorino, which you just heard him sing so beautifully. The simplicity and the honesty of the character are a reflection of the honesty and generosity of spirit that are at the heart of Luciano's ability to communicate directly with an audience. <laughs> Luciano, to commemorate the incredible artistry you've bestowed on us for the last 30 years, on behalf of all of us at the Metropolitan Opera, I'd like to present you with this autographed musical quotation from the final pages of Turandot, the last music Puccini composed shortly before he died. Thank you very much. 30 years in this theater are something so beautiful that I cannot even express. As much a, a human being can have a feeling of pride, not enough in comparison to what I have now in this precise mo moment. All you audience, orchestra, Maestro Lavagne, all you director of the theater, you for the last, Joe Volpe, you are very, very, very sweet to me, very nice. You invite me here to celebrate my third anniver 30th anniver anniversary. I thought that celebrating an anniversary is making somebody else singing. <laughs> <laughs> but but then, then uh, going home, when they make me the proposition on the plane, I realized that what a singer really would like to do in a day like that is to prove to himself that after 30 years he can sing. It was a very, very great day. Thank you very, very much.
Funding for this presentation was provided by the Charles E. Culpepper Foundation, Texaco, the Arthur and Alice Adams Charitable Foundation, Miami, Florida, and Donald G. Sisler.